Hey there, friends. This is Bill McDonald, the writing doctor. And today I want to do a revising question with you. One of my passages in the binder, the Dear Doc ELAR writing binder, is set up so that it correlates very closely with the 2018 revising portion of the test for fourth grade. Because in all of the years that I've seen STAR revising, in 4, 7, 9th, and 10th, that test was probably the most difficult in terms of the revising questions. So each day I'm going to go over one question with you, and I'm going to start with some of the easier ones and I'll build to some of the more difficult ones, which is what I would recommend to your students who don't have accommodations, who won't have the revising passage read to them. This is for writing teachers. Remember that for this last year, for 4th, 7th, 9th, and 10th, it's either going to say editing or revising on top of the passage. But in addition, when you read the instructions, if it's an editing passage, you're also going to see the word corrections inside that little paragraph called the instructions. And if it's revising, you'll see revisions. So think of this editing is the conventions, the grammar. Revising is the content where you add, remove, replace, or move things around. So what I'd like you to do is take a look at the question that I have. And let me look real quick. If you have the binder, you might want to go so you can follow along the digital or the hard copy, pages 389 to 393. When this was tested in April of 2018, only 56% of the fourth graders in the entire state of Texas got it correct. And all it was was a transition phrase that went after one sentence and before another one. So I'm going to spread my arms out here. And so Think of it like this, that I, if I have a teeter for one sentence, I'm going to have a transition. My body is in the form of a T now. And then I'll go over to my totter. If I have a C, I'm going to have my transition to go to the next sentence. And I'll go to my saw. And so what I want you to realize is that one of the reasons why kids in fourth grade struggle with this question is they had a limited understanding of vocabulary. And you can tell that many of them are not reading much of the passage because the, the, cor the correct answer was used as part of another paragraph, which I'll talk about when we look at the question that we're going to talk about transitioning okay so let me go ahead and click on share screen Con i'm going to click advanced and content from a second camera and there's the question right there for those of you that have been following along for a, a few weeks or a few months you know that rule stands for read the question and read it in read the sentence in the passage underline and understand in the question and in the passage label in the question and the passage mark the test the way that you're supposed to then we'll start evaluating and eliminating one answer at a time the cool thing about an it has three sticks which means we'll eliminate three and hopefully you'll, you'll tell your kids like i did here on the side you have to explain why you eliminate. Then you'll select one answer and show why it's correct in both the book and the Scantron. So let's take a look at the question. It came from fourth grade. Uh, the, the question that was like it in a very different passage about killing rhinos was the 2018 test. It was question number two. And like I mentioned, only 56% of the kids got it right. And all they had, all your kids had to do was understand how to transition between sentences. So let's read 
are the question, what is the best transition to add at the beginning of sentence eight? Okay. Once again, if you're going to follow along, it's on page 389 to page 393. And so if you look in my revising portion of my binder, there's a keyword strand sheet, but there's this page here that says revising strategies, fixing the content. And that's when you add a remove, replace R or move the content around. And for the revising passages, it's only going to be a word or some words, like a phrase, like you see there, a transition, a little phrase, or one sentence. That's the most you're ever going to have to revise for a passage. If you have an essay, you might, as a teacher, tell your students to add, remove, replace, or move a few sentences around so that the essay can get better in terms of its content. And what that means is you're going to put something in, take something out, or move something up, down, or over. And I like the Rutger bottle, IBC, because it stands for introduction, body, and conclusion. Every passage has to have a beginning. And we'll think of that little cap as the hook does it have any fizz? If it doesn't have any fizz, maybe somebody left the lid off the bottle. If there's no bottom glass to the bottle, there is no conclusion. And every essay has to have those three parts. So the keyword strand that we're going to look at from the list that I have and what I've done over the last several years is look at every single keyword strand since Star has started. And so think of transitions as necklaces that move from your head to your body, belts that move from your body to your second body part, a scarf, let's say that you have three reasons or three events. Well, a scarf could be your transition to your jacket and your socks could be your transition to your ending. Okay. And these either transitions between sentences or there's transitions between paragraphs. So take a look at my graphic organizer. This is what I call my readvising graphic organizer. And if you've been following along, part one of my student writing folder was the editing for conventions. Part two was the, revi uh, the revising Oh, sorry, expository for the essay. Part three and part four would be reading. And so every passage has a beginning, a middle, and an end. And every paragraph has a topic sentence. So if I was to hold my hand like, my hand like that, the main idea of a paragraph would represent the thumb. And then all the supporting sentences would be the other fingers. If you happen to have a paragraph with seven or eight uh, sentences, then you could add two or three fingers to this little hand. And so here's what we have. All we're trying to do is do revising. So if this is the reading, we sometimes have to add, remove, replace, or move something based on one of these ideas because everything in a passage ties together. And when it comes time to talk about any of those keywords, I will with you. But all we're talking about on this one is a transition, which is that right there. So revising is fixing the content. And we said it has to do with arm. We're A, adding green, red, removing red, replacing green, out and in or moving things around, which is changing the order, what's the best revision? Since the question said, what is the best transition? It said at the beginning of sentence eight. So there's lots of transitions. We have cause and effect. So cause is like, because of this reason, because this thing happened, why, why did this happen? There was this effect, there was this result. And 
that was the correct answer your students all they had to know was what as a result meant because this event here caused this effect over here but your students just didn't understand that as a result is a synonym or a similar saying than effect so they have to practice that and it's sort of like an action that causes a reaction or are we going to compare something and contrast something is there a conflict over here in this sentence or paragraph that has a resolution over here in this sentence or paragraph or let's say there's something maybe a topic sentence and then there's some more so teeter-totter seesaw so let's take a look at the answer choices after we look at sentence eight and what i've done in the passage zoom in a little bit so you can see it pretty clearly i went ahead and went to the passage and i made a bracket around sentence seven and closed it after sentence eight because how in the world are you going to know what transition to use unless we know what the sentence before was talking about so what we what your kids can do is so they don't get question numbers confused with sentence numbers have them write q number and this happens to be question number two so let's see what it says in sentence seven notice that i'm not reading the whole passage when you're transitioning between sentences you really only need to read the sentence before and the sentence after this position that they're asking about so that's a great thing for kids who struggle with reading it is true that video games can be a great way to help kids stay busy video games is our subject helps kids stay busy that's something positive that's why there's an up arrow learn how to focus that's another positive thing and interact socially with other children that's positive who enjoy this leisurely activity enjoying something is positive so lots of positive here so what i did on my graphic organizer i wrote those phrases it's a great way to stay busy it's a great way to learn to focus we can interact socially all those are positive things so let's look and see sentence eight so we can see what kind of transition teeter-totter that we need it the subject has the potential of consuming so much of their time well consuming a lot of time sounds like it's taking a lot of your time away so that's i'm, I'm gonna put a downer that's a negative thing other important things like homework and chores those are those are good things but what about them they get left undone that's negative or they're incomplete that's negative so is it because this happened these positive things cause these negative things to happen no and so a lot of students would probably just pick that but that's not always the case many kids know how to balance their time so i want you to look at the choices because the distractor in this case is as a result which is like a cause and effect so you have to think does that positive occurrence of kids focusing staying busy and interacting socially have a positive effect well if if it's the cause of something then an effect would more likely be positive if it's a cause and effect situation but since we have a positive followed by a negative your students would have to understand that in this case we would use however so on the t for transition i place the two possible ones as a result which is like cause and effect or compare and contrast which means opposites from each other so the better one between those two is however because we're going from a positive to a negative and 
look if you look at letter a those were easier to eliminate because if you say moreover basically you're saying more of the same in addition addition means plus which means more of the same we wouldn't pick an answer that's similar to another answer so we would eliminate those and i'm going to eliminate g because typically if we have C comes before E, like cause comes before effect, because of all these good things, normally good things were gonna happen if you're gonna use a typical cause and effect. So we're gonna use compare and contrast that the opposite could happen if kids are not careful, it has the potential, and that means it could happen. So we'll circle letter J, make a J right next to it. We've eliminated three, so I'll put three little check marks. We've selected one in the book, and I'll put a check mark, and I pretended to select it in the Scantron, and something that I learned from an awesome teacher this past year is, before you go and put it in the Scantron, go ahead and write the letter J right next to the number so that you know that the two J in the book has to match the 2J and the Scantron. So there you have it. I will go ahead and share another revising question tomorrow. And I'll do another editing question today. So if you scroll down my page, you'll be able to see the, the one editing question that I'll do. I'll also start to do some reading passages because many of you are ELAR teachers having to learn how to get your kids to be ready for the six editing or six revising or the paired passage that they will possibly get. They will, they will get one of those three in as part of their field test from third through eighth grade. So I hope that you can practice. Uh, if you have the binder, Look at page 251 and page 252. That has about 100 transition words and phrases uh, that move, allow your students to move from one idea to the next, one sentence to the next, one paragraph to the next. And I suggest that you make that part of the vocabulary. And if you're the spelling teacher, maybe incorporate some of those transition words and phrases into your spelling, not necessarily to know how to spell them, but to know how how to use them in a sentence and, and what they mean, what they stand for, because when only half the kids, 56% is almost half, get cause and effect wrong because they didn't know what as a result meant, that means we're not practicing or understanding vocabulary involving transitions enough. So uh, feel free to message me. If you have any questions, email me at writing underscore doctor at yahoo.com. If you uh, don't feel like messaging me. Uh, many of you who have had my trainings, there's a little bit of time left. Let, we can, like I mentioned in my last video, show a net gain of 5% per week. I have strategies that work. They're practical. They can be used right away. In this situation, you don't have to have my graphic organizer. If your kids just have a huge T for teeter-totter transition a transition is sort of like a transmission it allows you to go from one place to another with a transmission but in writing and reading we call it a transition god bless you guys and you have a great rest of your week